Logan Cat, welcome back to Palm Harbor Local, man. Yes. Hey, how are you doing, Dami? Good, man. How are you doing today? Fantastic. Uh, I spilled a little coffee in here just for a, everybody. Just a little uh, bit. <laughs> for everybody to know. So we got the nice aroma energizing us right now. Yeah, that's the next thing. Like we we added video. The next thing we're gonna add is like the aroma, right? A we smell cast. Smell. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so your company, American Painters, this is round two of your of being on on the podcast, yes. right? Thank you. So I look back, you're episode fifty seven, and we're at like one thirty three, one thirty four now. Dude, it's a great time. Wow. So it's That's been, a long time. It's been like a year and a half since you were first on on the podcast. Wow. Crazy. Doesn't it feel, oh my right? gosh. <laughs> Do I look a year and a half older? <laughs> I, I think you, like, I think you look the same. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I feel like I'm aging like a president would. You yeah. know, just <laughs> awfully. Uh, but thank you. I appreciate it. So I wanted to start with this and like over the last year and a half. And if you haven't listened to Logan's first episode, go back and listen to that one because we we dive into, you know, kind of your story, your past and and your business a little bit as well. Um, but since you've been on the podcast, now that we know it's been a year and a half, what's like something you've learned? I know you like reading books and, and that sort of stuff. So what's one thing that you've learned if you had to pick one? Yeah. Oh, one. In a year and a half. So this has been, first off, the most educational year and a half uh, ever, uh, just because of the position I was in prior being put into it. And to now, it's almost unfathomable, you know, the amount of business, you know, success we've been fortunate enough to have, luckily. I'm not saying it's because of the podcast, but all I'm saying is, you know, a year <laughs> and a half later, uh, one thing I learned, man. Yeah, it could, it could be business, could be life. Yeah. It could, I'm really thinking about because I want to give you a good answer because yeah. I want to really the most important thing. I feel like I've all you know what it is, and I we were just kind of telling you about this. I feel like I've always known to listen to people. You know when um when uh you have a teacher, you listen to what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But I think I was always very selectively listening, meaning when mm -hmm. I felt it was appropriate to listen, I listened. But I was told a thousand times in my childhood, you have two ears and one mouth. And I think in the last year and a half, uh, a lot of personal business, just systematic problems have disappeared because I've said, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me listen first mm -hmm. and then respond. And so that's probably it because it comes from, again, I would say a lot of the benefits I've experienced over the last year and a half have been from listening to mentors. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. per my personal life's always usually pretty great, but just even listening to the needs of my wife have made uh, our home life happier because now the dishes are unloaded before she gets home and mm -hmm. no one has mm -hmm. to fight about it, you yeah. know, and I, yeah. and I, uh, and it makes me happy. Uh, but then uh, when it comes to just people, you know, like day to day problems, I don't get as aggravated when some guy's taking a long time in front of 7 Eleven, you know, I'm a little bit outgoing anyway, but I might say something like, Oh man, they give you the wrong barcode or whatever it is, just yeah. to lighten the mood, and and that's made me appreciate people a lot more. So listening, listening, is it. yeah, that's the biggest thing I've learned is how to listen. And I'm obviously not great at it with how much I'm talking right now. Well, that's the point of this podcast, yeah. too, right? <laughs> but but listening, I would say, is yeah, it. and that's the continual thing I'll probably have to work on most of my life. Yeah, I think that's that's something that's like a, a skill or a muscle that you constantly have to like reevaluate. Yeah, you know, like, and it's it's almost like when you were, you know, giving your answer there, it kind of made me think of of just like, it's like sometimes we got to take a take a step back and like slow down, right? Which which can be hard to do as a business owner, or just hard to do in 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 life the way, you know. Uh, life in america is right now but um i think that's that's part of it too is just like okay let me let me take a step back like i don't have to move so fast and anyone who knows me <laughs> will tell you that i move fast yeah and i think that's important too um so uh we were talking about priorities and you know family being a big priority of mine um you know uh for anyone who wasn't here for the last podcast my father you know, took his life and you don't understand how that affects you as a person right away. But then now that it's been, you know, four, four or five years going on now, um, it's made me appreciate and slow down the family time that I have. Meaning mm -hmm. instead of being like, oh, we got to go to Hannah's family for dinner. I'm like, oh, man, I can't wait to get a home cooked dinner and enjoy mm -hmm. the family and and uh Again, I don't have kids yet, but I can imagine having kids. That's probably a big one. 
we had talked about this quote, uh, which I love for when I do have kids. Uh, it's in the seven habits of highly effective people. I couldn't even tell you who said it, but it goes, uh, the work will, the work will continue to come. Childhood won't. Mm. And that's kind of it with everything, you know, even yeah. your love life won't continue to come. Your wife, you know, the time I get with Hannah is my time now. So slowing down is probably even a better way to put it, Donnie. You nailed it. Yeah, there you go. And I'm like not it. good at that, <laughs> but I'm trying. And that's it's, a, yeah, it's and the same thing. It's a work in progress, right? I think we all, that's something we all kind of struggle with in, in different times. And, and that's why I say it's like, you, you got to reevaluate it, right? It's like a constant, like, okay, let me, let me check myself here. If I was slow, I probably wouldn't have spilled the coffee on the floor. <laughs> there you go. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Uh, um, all right, so let's let's jump. That's a, I, I like that answer, man. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. you you putting some thought into well, it. Well, you got. I want to know what you learned. What would you say? I feel like that's such a great question. Uh, I didn't even know that. That was what it wanted to hit me with. I love it. Yeah. Um. You know, I think it's something similar, kind of like what you're talking about, like with family time and everything. You know, just how important um those moments are. Like we were talking about before. So I had Scott Bedell on the, on the previous episode. And we were talking about time management and how, you know, managing your time is is important, but also it's also important so that you have time for your family and it would, and and you know those those precious moments every single day that add up um, yeah. over Scheduling time. Scheduling around priorities, yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. Priority being the family, yeah, you know. And so one thing I have in my calendar, and this is, uh, I I think the the time management thing is is always work in progress too, but I have in my calendar oh, every single day is family time six to eight and i've gotten sidetracked before where you know you don't always you're not always present in those moments but i think um i think recently that's something that's kind of stood out like you, yeah. you, you have to be there you have to put the phone down you know whatever it is and um and be there for your kids i can't even i mean today's world with tiktok and all the yeah. tv shows yeah I feel like if I wasn't working, you know, or I mean, I can even tell you just personally, and I, you know, we talked about hours worked. I work about 55 hours a week. Yeah. But when I'm not working, I know I'm just relaxing, watching TV or doing something pleasurable because you get so burnt out from working all day and then dealing with the minutia of stuff. So I can only imagine how difficult it would be to give your attention to a child when you're feeling all of the weight of... Mm -hmm. I mean, especially like, I mean, the new cycle, the new cycle lately is crazy. Like yeah. so crazy. I mean, I think there was UFOs a week ago. Yeah. Like I don't even yeah. remember, you yeah. know what I mean? But I think a week ago we were talking about UFO yeah. recordings and now it's like Twitter changed its name to X or something <laughs> and I can't even find the app on my phone anymore. So. Yeah. And it's like, you're, you I, I was talking to a buddy yesterday and you're um, like the, like the people you surround yourself with or the content that you absorb is so yeah. important. Like you have to, you have to put a filter on that stuff and just be very aware of of you know what you're putting into your brain and what time of the day and that sort of stuff Absolutely. too right so yep. and so that's so i do try to read every day if you can yeah, believe it i, I do that. sit there yeah uh or i'm driving i do uh audiobooks yeah but or great podcasts like yours there you go yeah uh it's i wonder what would happen if you didn't keep up with like local news for like a month and a half or two months oh you know i don't watch saying? i don't watch news you don't have, so you no. have no idea about like the no. ufo reporting stuff? i just from probably like facebook or whatever like yeah. browsing facebook I'm saying, well it's like for two months i wonder what happened no info yeah you know just because i couldn't even imagine i couldn't even imagine because i read all so kind, you, i read you, financial stuff i read business stuff i oh, read yeah. local stuff i read everything or watch even. I, yeah, you know? so I, I, uh, we don't ever watch the news and never got into that. Yeah. And then I don't really watch news. Yeah. But, yeah. but you're just reading or absorbing. Re reading re articles by people who yeah. I think are good, you know, writers or whatever, yeah, yeah. Or trusted sources. And, but you just see even like the, the overall news is all so much. Yeah. But yeah, I know it's crazy. That's yeah, so slowing think, down. Yeah. I th and I think you just have to go back to, um, you know, is that, is that, is it something that you want to absorb or something that you want to, yeah. you know, uh, content that you want to surround yourself with or whatever. Right. So if it's important for you to, to stay in the know about certain things, then, hmm. then great. But I think, I think also like watching it versus reading it and you're selecting the source, like where that information is coming from. Like that's important too. Yeah. You know? And I mean, you know, like I said, I don't really watch the news, but I would yeah. say Bay News 9, if, shout out Bay News 9, you know, I'll throw that on in the morning to watch the weather just to make sure I get you know, being a painter, I got to know where the storms are there coming. There you go. Yeah. But, you know, it's, again, 
It's just a lot, but that's just, and I say all that to say that's why it's so important to prioritize that time off or yeah. time with family mm-hmm. because there's so so much stuff to think about, you know. And um, and uh, the other crazy thing is, you know, here in Palm Harbor, you know, Tampa Bay, uh, life's kind of expensive all of a sudden. Donnie. Yeah. What's going on, man? Yeah. In the last year and a half, budgeting. I've learned that budgeting. Budgeting. Yeah. I've had to get real good at budgeting. Yeah, inflation, pr- home prices, home values yeah. have gone up quite a bit. What do you? How does that affect you? What do you see? Um, I think, you know, I, I think it affects like the first time home buyer, like the younger generation, the people that are, that are, you know, um, your age or younger, right. That are trying to buy their first home, um, or people that just haven't budgeted properly, um, for a long time. And they're like, okay, yeah. now I want to buy a home or they've, they've, you know, the rents have pushed them to that limit. And now I'm like, well, now it makes sense to buy or something like that. Right those people are, are affected the most, right? Mm-hmm. And you feel for those people. Those um, are usually the people that need the affordable housing the most. You yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, so it's like it's pinching the people, and I don't want to say at the bottom, but just since yeah. the people who yeah. need the need the entry level. You know, if there's no entry, if, if there's no entry level, if the, what do they call that, uh, barrier to entry is yeah. 500,000. Right. You know? And, I, and that's that's almost what it is in Pinellas County. I mean, you can mm-hmm. find some condos and stuff for cheaper, but the, yeah, I mean, we've, we've gone from, I mean, when we bought a home in 2017, it was like 225, 250. Like that was kind of like that, that norm. And now it's, it's doubled almost. Do you think it's staying there because of I the do, population yeah. we have? Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Cause... And people, Tampa is now become a place where people want to, to live. Yeah. Right. Not just they vacation. found out our secret, man. Yeah. I can't believe it. Ah, oh, we had it hidden. I, I know, know. I know. And it, but it, it's interesting because it, it pushes. Um, I mean, yeah, it's it's interesting to think about, right? Because because the the home prices, it it makes it difficult for some people to to purchase. A lot of people are are moving to the Tampa Bay area, and a lot of people are moving away from the Tampa Bay area because of home prices, because of yeah. traffic, and you know, uh, more people living here. So um, this is the balance, but I think at the end of the day, like there's still more people moving here than going than out. going away, and that's gonna drive drive prices, prices up. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think so too. Yeah. That's the uh, that's kind of a how is how has that affected you? Like how has inflation affected uh, affected you since well, like COVID? I mean, yeah, oh yeah, I guess in a year and a half. So uh, first off, you know, it's it's affected everything. It's affected paint prices, yeah. labor prices, everything, and you know. It's tough for me just because I, my guys used to make a livable wage and be like, if you were a painter, you could live a pretty good life. You know, you could put away for retirement and live a good life, you know, making $50,000 a year painting. Now it's like, I got to pay them 60, 65 and they're still struggling. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? $65,000 a year is almost poverty anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, unless your wife's working too or something, but some of these guys are single guys, you know, and so it's put a big pinch on them, um, which is tough. Uh, the paint price has gone up. And so not only have the homes gotten more expensive, it's gotten more expensive to do stuff to your home. Mm -hmm. But why I asked you is because I'm not really seeing a residential pullback on people working on their homes. I think with the amount of people that moved here, like they're still, they moved here. They want to make their home the way they want it, you know? So I guess the question is, when does that stop? When you have, when you have this, the whole of people moving to the area, then that's when, Mm-hmm. things might slow down but it hasn't it yeah it hasn't yeah yeah you're right like i've seen i've seen more additions just like in my little circle where yeah. i run and walk with the kids and stuff i've seen more people adding additions to their home well if you have a three percent interest rate on a home that's worth double that's what true. you bought it for yeah. too you may not be inclined to move yeah so it's crazy out there that's why i was curious what yeah. you were seeing yeah yeah it's um but the it's good though, you know. I think um, Tampa Bay is amazing, and I Absolutely. want the Tampa Bay area to be as profitable and metropolitan and o- oasis like and as beneficial for everyone here because it is such a great area. I mean, mm-hmm. just everything we have here from the bay to the beaches to we have like three different beaches you can go to within thirty minutes of each other. Oh yeah, you know, and they're, and they're beautiful, all amazing, right? all amazing. Yeah. yeah. So I do. I love the Tampa Bay area. Um, that's yeah. And, and that, that brings me back to like, I think it was before I got into real estate. Like I, I grew up here and I always wanted to like, as I'm like, I'm never going to live here when I'm older. Yeah. Like I got to get out of this area. Right. This, this sucks. And, 
And then I got older and wiser and I'm like, yeah. man, this area is pretty cool. Pretty cool, yeah. man. You can't beat it. <laughs> I uh, I just recently went to Colorado for the first time. And, oh, sweet. And I'd never seen mountains like that before. I went on Pikes Peak, boom, boom. It was amazing. Um, and I was in awe and it was incredible. And it was I was just struck with beauty and grace. And I was like, this is what, you know, Purple Mountains Majesty, this is it right here. Yeah. And it was incredible. But then when I get back to Florida, I'm driving across to Howard Franklin. I'm like, it doesn't compare to this. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't. Yeah. I just, I love the water. It's crazy because like when you don't see the mountains, they are beautiful in the distance. Absolutely. But every time I drive across the bridge, and I've lived here for my entire life, mm -hmm. you know, when you're across the water, when you're on Clearwater Beach, yeah, nothing like it, man. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. from sea Going to shining over the bridge. sea, man. Yeah. 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 So it's I cool. do. I love it. Uh, what was Did I answer your question? What was your question? Yeah, you did. You okay, did. Good. It was. Um, it was. I think we started with with what did you? What was one thing you yeah. learned? And then we got into all that. So. Yeah. Welcome to my brain, man. We're going down. <laughs> we're just going down this rail. We'll find out. All right. Well, let's talk. Let's talk about the honorary mayor stuff because this is yes. your second year running as the, the honorary mayor of Palm Harbor. Yes. Yeah, so I got I got ousted last year. All I right. got beaten. I know. I we're know. not going to let that happen this year. Nope. So what this is for anyone who doesn't know, we're on the Palm Harbor Local Podcast. And the Palm Harbor Honorary Mayor is a big fundraising campaign because Palm Harbor doesn't have a mayor. You know, we're not a we're an unincorporated municipality here. Mm -hmm. So because of that, the chamber, the Palm Harbor Chamber of Commerce, takes that title and they nominate people such as myself, schmucks who are going to make some money for some people <laughs> to be the heads of some fundraisers. And uh, what happens is all the money raised. 50% of it goes to the Palm Harbor Chamber of Commerce. The other 50% goes to a charity of our choice, of the nominee's choice. I happen to choose Julie Weintraub's Hands Across the Bay to be my sponsor just because they are such an incredible organization that's right here in Tampa Bay, and they help our families, our women in need, our community directly. And for anyone who doesn't know what they do, they provide resources for families uh, or say, you know, I'm not even going to say you because I don't want it to happen to you. Say there's a family where the husband's a breadwinner mm -hmm. and the wife takes care of the kids. Mm -hmm. The husband's hit by a truck and suddenly the income stops. They can go to Hands Across the Bay okay. and receive, you know, gift cards for food, clothes, anything that may be needed so to help. Anything get and home. everything to help somebody. In, coaching, in even need. life oh, coaching. Wow. Hey, if your husband handled the finances, let us help you with that. Wow, incredible! And they help a lot of people who have been struck with domestic abuse. So. Their main lady, and I, I'm pretty sure I have permission to talk about this because she's been on the news talking about it, all kinds of stuff. Their main lady, her name is Melissa, she got stabbed by an ex-husband 32 times. <laughs> it might have even been 37. I don't know. 32 mm. is what I think it is. 32 times. Mm. Dude, my cat claws me a little bit, and it hurts so... I can't even imagine. Yeah. 32 That's times. That's crazy. Yeah. And this organization helped her. And so much so that she is now the director running the entire organization. Oh, under wow. Julie Weintraub. That's a cool story. It is cool. And so I love the organization. Uh, and then also the Palm Harbor Chamber, like I said, directly helps local Palm Harbor businesses, yeah. which, you know, keeps Palm Harbor weird, keeps Palm Harbor fun, keeps Palm Harbor, you know, local, yeah. essentially. Yeah. And so both those organizations are great. My goal is $20,000 raised. Mm. Yep, it's a big goal. So, but it's uh, what's never. The, what's the most anyone's ever raised? So, the, I, I feel like this event is, or this. So, I, well, I, let me take a step back. I did some research and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but um, the Palmer um, Honorary Mayor thing yes. started back in 1982. So, it's yes. been going on and it, there's been like some up peaks and valleys, right? Where it's been like big. Absolutely. And, it's right? cool. Yeah. You know more about it than I do. Yeah. I didn't even know 1982. <laughs> I know it's been around. Yeah. So, yeah. um, do you know, like, what's the most that's most money that's been raised? Last now? year was the most, and okay. I want to say it was fourteen thousand dollars from all of the the from people that were in... person. Oh, from one person. From one person. All right, so we got to get 20. twenty thousand would be the record. Okay, that's why I want it. And so, even if they beat me with twenty, if I get twenty and they beat me, what am I gonna do? Yeah, I set yeah, the record. Yeah, you know what I mean. Achieve uh, your goal. There you go. But but it would be great because I don't get any benefit from it. You know, if anything, it takes my time and effort, which I'm happy to give. Because what a great thing I get to do. I've never ever had an opportunity to just raise a massive amount of money that's going to directly affect local business and local families. Mm -hmm. You know, I can give out food at a soup kitchen. I can donate my time and I'm happy to do that too. Mm -hmm. But this is me going 
all out to do something for someone else. And I've never had a chance to do that before. So I'm super excited about it. Yeah. So what I'm really doing, the big one is August 11th. That's okay. the event. That's right. That's yep. on your mind. Yep. We I have an event August 11th at LBC, Local Brewing Company of Palm Harbor, a Palm Harbor local company. Mm-hmm. Um, August 11th is the first preseason game for the Buccaneers. So we're doing a big watch party. They're going to have the game up on the screen. Nice. I've got a beer pong with water tournament. To so anybody can play. It's open play, but then yeah. we have a legitimate tournament for a, a, a prize and a trophy. I got a custom trophy nice. made. I'm telling you, dude, we're going all out. Yeah. There's going to be cornhole. There's going to be free food. You'll have to buy your drinks. And during the time, I think there's a three drink limit. Please, you know, it's for charity, everybody. Yeah. Uh, there's silent auctions with sports memorabilia and jewelry donated by Julie Weintraub and the Golden Diamond Source for a silent auction. So there's all kinds of stuff to do. I've got sponsors, so it's all covered, all the costs. All you got to do is show up. You don't even have to donate. If you feel so compelled because you see me sweating and working my butt <laughs> off, great. Uh, but you don't have to. I just want to fill up that restaurant for a local company on a Friday night, bring in a lot of buzz for them, help them out, and bring awareness to the Hands Across the Bay, the Palm Harbor Chamber, also, the guy who runs the beer pong own, or water pong owns a company that does that. The silent auction guy owns a company. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So this is helping as many local companies, including my sponsors, which I'm just going to tell them because they paid me money on a whim. Yeah. Chris Robbins with Robbins Home Inspections. Uh, Aaron Allen with Paver Solutions. Uh, and we got Daryl Green of DVG Ventures and Nick Economides of Eco Law. All these guys have taken a chance on me to help these people. And so... That's why August 11th, 6th six six to nine. 9. Let me I'll read you the address. Yeah, LBC it's on on US 19. 35631 US Highway 19 North, Palm Harbor, Florida 34684. August 11th, Friday from 6 to 9. Please come out and support. Again, it'll be me for honorary mayor, but it's supporting hands across the bay. And you know what, Donnie, I'll even take it a step further. I forgot to tell you about this. What do we got? So Hands Across the Bay will provide gift cards to families who are in need. I know another nonprofit named Victor Newman Ministries who is aware that I'm using them and they're they're cool with this. They've signed up for this. They provide food for people like right out of their their ministry, right out of their their spot. I don't want to say shop, but they give food bags to people every Friday, set okay. time in St. Pete. Yeah. Victor Newman Ministries can sell you a gift card for $50 to Walmart. So it costs you $50. Its value is $50. Doesn't cost you anything more. But Walmart will give them a rebate of $5. So they can sell you a gift card at face value. It doesn't cost you anything. And they get benefits from it. Mm-hmm. So nice. Julie Weintraub's Hands Across the Bay provides gift cards to people. So they are now buying all of their gift cards from Victor Newman, which means not only are you helping Palm Harbor mm-hmm. Chamber, Not only are you helping Julie Weintraub's Hands Across the Bay, you're helping Victor Newman Ministries provide food to families in the Tampa Bay area. And that is why I am running with all my heart for the honorary mayor of Palm Harbor. I love it. And there's uh, there's so many other businesses that you've you, you're, you're helping along the way, too. So yeah. it's, it's pretty cool. Like I said, if I'm going to do it, you know, I just I want to touch every person that I can to help because, you know. Yeah. And not that it's an excuse, but last year I didn't win. Because we were busy. I was doing stuff, you yeah. know? You get sidetracked. And yeah, and yeah. It, and I was like, if I'm going to do it, I want to do it big. So we're doing it big. Yeah. And I'm very excited about the event, too. I, um, again, just helping all those people, getting a bunch of people to a local mm-hmm. restaurant is mm-hmm. is huge for them, you know? Because yeah. some nights, you know, you can plan for a Friday night to have 80 people there, 20 people show up, you know? So if I can get 400 people to show up, my goal was 150, but it, they wouldn't be mad at me if I got 400 people to show up. There so, you go, yeah. So if you're listening to this, you're invited. <laughs> and we'll have all of the, we'll have the address in the description below in the show Thank notes. You. So check all that stuff out. The link to donate, well, I'll have to get the link from you to donate. I I'll, think it's I'll on, do that. I'll send yeah. you the flyer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what made you choose this charity? Yeah. So uh, Hands Across the Bay, why did I choose them? Yeah. So... Really, it was just by chance. I, um, I, a girl I went to high school with is Julie Weintraub's director assistant. And so she had posted something about it. Mm-hmm. And I just went down the rabbit hole and I was like, wow, this organization is kind of crazy. Yeah. It's so, so helpful. And, you know, 
the primary benefactor is women, primarily, is what my understanding is, you know, because usually, uh, I don't want to say usually, but if there's an abusive relationship, most of the time the woman's the one that needs out. True. Most of the time, True. just from what I've heard. I'm no expert. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so with that, you know, just having a soft spot, I have a lot of really powerful women in my life that I love, you know, mm-hmm. so my mom is my business partner. Mm-hmm. She kind of went through something where, again, my dad passed away unexpectedly. She didn't need any help from this organization. Uh, you know, I was there and I helped and she had a bunch of other resources for herself. But just anything like that, I think, is so crucial because if my mom didn't have those resources, she may have needed hands across mm-hmm. the bay. So there's that. And then also to being a husband to, you know, my high school sweetheart who I love uh, more than anything in this world. You know, if I were to pass away, you know, I would hope there was be someone to help her. Uh, not that she even needs my help. I know her father or other people could. But if there was ever a need for her, yeah, I hope that'd be covered. And so that's why I just, I don't know if it's being a provider or, you know, that sense of, I don't even want to call it being a man, but just the protect. I just feel like I am the protector. Mm-hmm. And that that mm-hmm. is a charity that directly helps protect people in our local community, yeah. you know. Last year I did Autism Speaks and I didn't okay. hear anything from them ever. You know? Oh yeah, okay. And I think it's so cool that they there's there's so many different avenues, right? Like mm-hmm. we we've talked about other charities and stuff, and it's like they're great, you know, but they have like one specific niche that that they focus yeah. on and do a great job in. But um, yeah. this one covers uh, a lot of different uh, avenues to help people. Yeah, which is I, really, really once cool. I heard they do financial coaching, then it's not like yeah, I don't think it's a CFP or anything, but I think yeah. it's. I think it's someone saying, hey, Budgeting. here's the base. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, all the organ. So there's three of us running. I'm running for Hands Across the Bay. John Alfie is running for um, Feast Food Pantry, a great organization. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Mike with Edgewater is running for Sleep in Heavenly Peace, which builds beds for kids who don't have beds. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So all three of these causes, no matter who wins, we're helping some three fantastic organizations and the Palm Harbor Chamber, which helps all of our businesses. Mm-hmm. And no matter what, you can vote for Mike $10 a month and me $100 a month. And you're perfect. still helping people, perfect. you know perfect. what I mean? Yeah. You're allowed to help us both, you know? So You can help all three, but as long as you yes. um, give as long Rogan as... just a little bit more so we can get to that 20000 I just got to be the exponential. <laughs> that's all right. I'm working harder for it, I yeah. hope, you know? Yeah. But... um. But that's and that's the biggest thing this year. So again, listening and doing that kind of thing is is crucial. But helping people too is is something that I want to do. Yeah, you I know love why that. not? So have you ever thought about? Um, I know your your the way your mind works and and you love doing things and helping people. Have you ever thought about starting your own charity of any kind? Oh no, I haven't. It'd be cool. Yeah, I don't know. I think other people have got it figured out. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think other people so have So just got, being involved and being... Uh, yeah. yeah. There, because there's so many things I care about. There's so many things I would love to help. Uh, I couldn't... I don't okay. think I could just be like, this right, is what I want to... one. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. kind of like this organization, I want to help as many people as possible. So maybe, you know, maybe if I really was thinking about it, there might be like a, a nonprofit to help people build businesses. That'd be cool. Mm. Like if you're in an underserved area... I can give you some resources and, and coaching on how to start your own small business. There that would go. be it. That's it. There, there it go. is. <laughs> Boom. Done it. But all right. So 2024, when we have you back on. Yeah. But that, and yeah. I just, that, because that's what gets me fired up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's why I would do that. But I, I, and I think that, I think entrepreneurs are what it needs to be the focus of the world anymore because, you know, we talk about the big divide of the upper and the lower, that middle class needs to be strong. And that's where we, mm-hmm. that's where we shine, man. Yeah. I'm happily middle class, you know? And there's so many, uh, I think in our area, in Palm Harbor and Dunedin, um, there's so many small businesses and which makes this area so unique. And like what we were talking about before, like why so many people want want to be here, yep. you know? So I mean, and the, they're the best businesses, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Bogota, you yeah. know, is yeah. a fantastic restaurant. And yeah. It's a small business. Usually the people love the small, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love an Outback. Who doesn't love a Bloomin' Onion? Yeah, right, you know? right. But, uh, but the small businesses are usually the ones you remember the most yeah yeah so it's important i'm telling you that's my favorite thing is small business now it's crazy how it's crazy how 
your life can change when you become a provider for things. You know, I provide, like I said, a salary for 20 painters, 20 mm -hmm. full-time painters. That's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Big babysitter now, Donnie. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I when they have problems, again, listening, I have to listen to them. I have to understand their problems. I have to help them. When they have financial problems, I have I do provide some coaching and say, hey, well, this is a basic budget spreadsheet and, and those kind of things. Um, but if Target can pay their people the lowest amount possible and yeah. maximize profits, yeah. you know, that kind of sets the pay standard. We need raises across the board, starting with from the corporations, and then we small business owners can afford to pay our people more, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. I guess that's kind of what I was getting at. But just to say that uh, I really think that, that empowering the middle class is what is the answer mm -hmm. to most of the things that we run into. Yeah. And I think that small business coaching and helping people become entrepreneurs is a key to that. Yeah. And because some of them too are going to um, go on and grow their business and sell it and make yeah. a lot of money. Right. And then you, you would hope that in turn that they, they reinvest it back into that um, economy, that, that local exactly. community that kind of helped them kind of grow their business too. So yeah, I think that the small, uh, yeah, I mean, the small business community has always been around. That's and, you, man. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. That's me right? and you right now. Yeah. Yep, yeah, working hard and, and, and doing what we can. So, um, all right, so August 11th, 6 to 9 p.m. at LBC. Address, nice. links, and all that stuff in the show notes below. Check nice. it out. And um, and go meet Logan if you haven't met Logan before. Yes, go, I'll go be, I, I promise I'll be sweating uh, yeah. <laughs> running around that place, you know. So yeah, I'll no wear doubt. deodorant. I'll be happy. Uh, but the biggest thing is, again, filling the restaurant, helping the local companies, the local sponsors, yeah. realtors, man, you, you know. Yeah. Invite as many realtors, free food. I'm telling dude, free food. It's good food. There you go. Yeah. You know, free food. Uh, come out, meet. We have a inspector. That'd be a great connection for him. Sure. So just hopefully we can help. Dude, let's just ho help all of Tampa Bay, Donnie. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Thank you, everybody. Um, yeah, so go check him out. And then you'll have to keep me keep me posted if you do any more events and stuff like that. And we'll, we'll be yes. able to promote this. This is my big one for now. Okay. If there's only, dude, only so much hours in a day. <laughs> I was... Uh, someone asked me, they go, well, when's your next one? Next one? I mean, I'm trying to make it to this one. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to get there. Yeah. yeah. But you have until, what you said, middle September of September 15th. Yeah, September, September 15th to donate um, for Logan and his honorary, honorary mayor yep. of Palm Harbor. And help as many families as possible. Yes. Thanks for being here, bud. Thank you.